Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Come, welcome back to MotoGP 18 has, we're getting a bit emotional now, has a personal manager, his email to Mario, he's been so impressed, I've played with the guys in the bits, you're a very young rider, but this year you've shown all the maturity you need to become a champion, keep on the right track and I'm sure you'll, we will see you, soon see you compete in even greater competitions, as are we ready, if the man Eddie, Snikers team, that is what we have chosen in Moto2 to finish at least third in the championship. Let's see if we can do that. Head into the South International Circuit in Qatar for the Moto2 debut of Mayo McDonald. As here goes Mayo then on the Snikers team. He's the teammate of bad boy Romano Fanati. And I saw some suggestions for Mark VDS, KTM. As what the hell the riders doing out of the pits there. But Mayo going with a single rider team initially. So there's also the likes of Grassini considered. Kiefer racing alongside the veteran Dominic Agata. We went with Snipers because they're one of the few teams that has a top performance initially. Along with Mark VDS, along with KTM. Which is a bit surprising considering how Fanati's kind of gone and went in Moto2 so we've gone with the shock choice here so Mark VDS are going up against Alex Marquez Ron Mir They're going up against the KTMs of Brad Binder Miguel de Vieira of course the VR46 team of Pekka Bagnaya and Luca Marini and this bike as oh there goes Bagnaya down already he's already clashed with McDonald as he's got to be a 59.9 from Alex Marquez let's see how well McDonald does has he's got just the default settings got no setup sheet with Moto 2 bikes unlike with the Moto 3 by a couple of years there to work on that setup. Instead, he's just raw in this class, so don't expect him to be right up there, even with a high performance bike. You can see he's already a few seconds off. Alex Marquez as he gets on the power nice and early, and this bike just not getting into the corners as well, doesn't feel like he can push as well on the brakes, even though the only adjustment he's made is. Going to make it a bit softer than the brakes going into the corners as he does a 2 or 2.3. It's already in the mid pack. So expect as the season goes on for McDonald to get better at this Moto2 bike as he adapts to it. And it's a bike which is very much feels halfway in between a Moto GP and Moto3 bike now. With the Moto3 bikes being a bit more lively. Recent additions. A bit more fun to ride, honestly. So let's see how my dog can do on this bike. He has an inexperienced teammate as well with Romano Fanati. Experienced Moto 3 campaigner. Finished run up in that class by one minute. Well, he's not exactly the model team, mate. You perhaps want when you're going up a level. The man are not doing too bad on this lap. Just half a second back. And the main thing to learn about this bike as well is the tyre wear. It's going to be much more than in Moto3. Well, there was barely any tyre wear. Now, he's perhaps going to have to manage these tyres a bit more in the middle part of the race. As there goes Miguel Oliveira with 58.6. Doesn't look like Mayo's going to get close to Alex Marcus this time. Now the bar has been significantly raised. As he goes into the final corner. So careful not to have that front sliding. Especially with the brakes how they are at the moment. But let's see if he breaks the two minute barrier. Not quite. 
As I've got his final lap in qualifying, he's two seconds off the pace, Mario. Let's see if we can get under that two minute barrier for him. Let's see if he can somehow get into the top 10 as well. He's just outside it at the moment, with less than five minutes remaining of the session. And taking it. So it's okay to have one, two with every ahead of Binder and Pekka Badnaya rounding out the front row ahead of Alex Marquez, Verge, and then Sam Lowe's on the second row ahead of Cortuaro, Navarro on the Grassini and Marini. With Simone Corsi, the Italian veteran, rounding out the top ten ahead of Vera veteran Agata, and then the youngster, the Kunta. I don't know how you say it. And then we've got Baldas Ari, Vinales, and Pasini on the fear front. There's Mario leading the sit throw alongside Schwarter and Odendale. And you've got Joe Roberts on the NTS, just behind his teammate. Then Power, he rounds out the top train ahead of one mere. Poor qualifying. And Ben Snyder, Danilo, and Kurudin. And you've got Manzini, or Manzi, should I say, Bucatelli, and Remy Gardner, the son of Wayne. And then you've got Hector Barbara. Nagashima, and there's Ronaldo Fanati. So McDonald's out qualified in by around four seconds. Not bad at all on his debut. And you've got he's just ahead of his fellow Italian. You've got Granado and then Danny Kent at the back. Another ex Moto3 champion. So let's see how Mayo does. Can he grab some points on his debut? So here's McDonald revving out for the first time on board a Moto2 bike waiting for the lights to go out. As we get underway in Qatar for six laps. And I have no idea what that sound is at the beginning. So here comes one minute. Have a little look at Mayo. Into the first corner. And Mayo holds on ahead of the Mark VDS bike. He's looking around the outside of a couple of riders. Not going to work there though. Oh, is it? He's got to run out of the corner. Could he get into the points? He goes for the right. That's where he fell in qualifying. But well, he's got to run this time around the outside. Was that Pasini as well? Around the outside of Quartararo and Corsi. He's getting jam packed here for the top 10 places on his opening lap. Mayo. Doing a good job to be right up there. That's all he goes down the inside of Corsi. And Marini as well, up into ninth. Really is outshining his teammate Fanati. And enjoying it on this opening lap. It's all about over Luca Marini looking to overcome the inside. Has he got the move done? And the VR46 machine he has. Up into eighth. What a start. Poor Mario. Top 10 would be a superb result in his debut. And I'll come in as a Moto3 champ, of course, they expect more. Expect top fives, expect podiums. But this is not a bad stop. He's got Navarro in front. He could have been his potential teammate as well. On that Grassini bike. Look at Mayo just right up to the tail end of him. As there's his teammate Romano. Battling for 26th for McDonald. Bounce for 7th. Has it gone to start, finish straight? Oh, that was a dodgy change to 4th. As there's Shirota. Battling with Cordero for 12th. Got a battle for the top 5 in front between Baldessari and Vergate. There's Alex Marcus with a 204. That's the fastest lap. Not opening up. Well, Mario tries to keep that power in check. Well, applying it. And Shirota's making moves up the order on his Dynavolt bike. So is Fanati up to 24th. Head of Malaysian Pauli. Well, man, not even in the points. Battling with Pasini. You expect both of them to be in the points. But they are battling for 16th. Well, Donald's battling for a top five now. Cruising up to the back. Well, Verge. You've got Sam Lowe's and Luca Barini. Oh, battling for ninth. Mamaya breaks himself but still holds on to seventh. You've got the youngsters, the Spanish youngsters battling for a point. Oh, another one is right in the tail of Mayo. And Jorge Navarro. Kind of overlooked now is Jorge. 
and this contingent of Spanish riders that are up and coming. Because he's all by himself on Grassini. Doesn't really stand out in Moto 2 like he did in Moto 3. Well, he had that one season in Moto 3, didn't Kind of leapfrogged up. For anyone else, maybe another season in Moto 3 would have helped with his status, maybe. But he's a fine Moto 2 rider, as he's showing in this race. He's got power ahead of Hector Barber. For 25th, just like we would have expected to say. The first race of the season. Ordadel and Locatelli battling well for 19th. Well, Mao is hooking up that final corner. Look at that bike. Beautifully into the apex. Mo well, doesn't need to make too many setup changes as one is in the points. Back to the Corsi. 413. Well, Marquez 58 7. McDonald 59 5. He's going to hang on this Moto 2 thing, isn't he? Didn't expect to be saying that in the first race of the season. Yeah, Mayo seems to be a very good rider. Seems to be getting better with age. With experience. Well, Dominic Agatur down in 19th. Swiss veteran. Tend to do a bit better than that. That's all McDonald a bit out of the rhythm there. Ryan Vergate. The break tight for that left hander. You've got to be careful getting on the power. You can see the front rising. Wanted to wheelie. This one we're still battling with Simone Corsi. Got Bassini finally in the points in 14th. McDonald a second ahead of Navarro. But he's just push, trying to push a bit more to catch up to for a game front, but it's not happening as Bagnaia battling with Oliveira for second. And let's see if McDonald can push on a bit as Virgo is losing touch with the top five. Very classy top five as well. Baldazari, the KTMs, Alex Marquez. And Peko Bagnaya. Maybe Mary McDonald soon. He's all over the Spaniards. In the final corner. Now let's see the grunt of this. Seeing as everyone remember got spec engines in Moto 2. As oh, there goes Kurudin down. Kurudin. It's Mayo into the 58 and into Sip. Has he held the apex against Virgo? He has. He could have been a MotoGP rider, you don't forget. Jonas Volga having his illness, unfortunately, and having to take time off. Virgo is a Tech 3 rider in Moto2. But then he switched to Dino Volt, so if he stayed with Tech 3, you never know. He could have been another Spaniard in MotoGP at the moment. So have been the Malaysian rider. I don't have the battle. Oh dear. We'll see it for once again. Outbreaks himself into that left hander. That was Verge back bite. Don't want trying to get back in the next right. It was in the second half of the race as well. Oh, so there goes Isaac Vinales down. And look at Madonna. He's virtually pushing Verge through these corners. Looks down the inside of the Spaniard. And gets the run out of the left hand and back up into sit. I'm not sure you can bridge that gap to fifth of the remaining laps, but what a controlled race. Very different to his first outing, say, on the Rookies Cup bike in Moto3 as well. But then it did fall apart in the final couple of laps on his Moto3 debut. So let's see if Mayo can keep it up. Much better bike to start off with in Moto2 than in Moto3. I said one of the top bikes, surprisingly. And look at that front tyre. Look at the wear. That front tyre. How abysmal is that? Rear tyre is perfectly fine. Front tyre is a bit all over the place. This is a two second gap in front. 
Let's run the penultimate lap now as Danny Kent up the 25th only for the Brit. It could be another horror Moto2 season for him. Just has not worked out since he stepped up as a Moto3 world champion. Definitely working out for Mario though. This is 2.2 back of Aldazari. He seems to be glued to the back end of Brad Binder. It's all Mario a bit wide there through the right. These couple of corners, he's never really hooked up this race. I don't know for once he's hooked up the hairpin there. And not got the Wii on the exit either. And the next time we've got Bagnaya. And there we are still battling behind Alex Marquez. He's got a bit of a gap with a lap and a half to go. But what race pace for Mario. He's just throwing in here. Yeah, there's off-season testing. But it's first race at Moto2 level. Are you expecting to maybe drop off now? Instead, he seems to be keeping pace with the front runners. Let's look at Baldassari now making moves on Brad Binder. Seems to be matching them that right to that time wise. I know he's a bit wide there. It's Corsi and Pacini battling over 6 deep. Sam Lowe's into the top 10 of one minute. That's a great onto the final lap of the opening round of the Moto2 World Championship. And what a race for Mario McDonald. Started in the mid pack. And he has just gotten better as this race has gone on. Up into Sip. There are some very good riders behind. Some class riders in this category. As he's dropped down to a 59.9. That's actually better than his previous that time. There's Begnaya batting with the Vieira. You see Mario just a couple tenths slower than the riders in front, unfortunately. So he's not going to be able to catch up or keep that. But you can keep that gap similar in these last couple of laps. Maybe just indicate something he's got to work on as the season progresses, what the team's got to work on as well in development wise. And you've got a big team in KTM. Big team in Mark VDS, in Pons as well in front. So it's going to be tough for a team which is very new to Moto2. A couple of new riders in Moto2 as well. They're battling right up. Look at Fanati up to 17th. His race has gone on deeps and browns as well. He's been working his way up the order. There's the Italian, just a poor qualifying from him. And look at Mario, half a second ahead of Erge. Has he got just two corners to go? Who's going to win in Qatar? He's going to fill the podium places. And he's going to be in sixth. There's only one man there at the moment with one corner to go. Look up that apex, Mario. Get on the power nice and smooth and race towards the line and grab your first points. In Moto2, what a brilliant ride from him and Alex Marquez. Live here ahead of Bagnaya, Baldassari, Brad Binder, Mo McDonald, Savvy Verge. What a top seven, what a ride in his first race. But take all of that as well. As we see Alex Marquez wins the opening round of the season by seven tenths ahead of Oliviera, Bagnaya, Baldassari, Binder, and there's Mayo in. See it for what a fantastic result. 4.5 seconds off the lead. But look at his fastest lap. It's right up there. The podium gets is not quite an axe marks level, but no one was this race. So that is fantastic to see that the raw pace is there. Maybe just need to improve qualifying and just need to improve maybe a bit more consistency in the race as well. As you saw, he dripped into the dipped into the two minute barrier near the end. So again for Mario, fantastic debut. And we've got Verge in seventh ahead of his teammate Sharotta. Look at that level across the line. You've got Navarro, Ron Mir, Sam Lowe's, Cotteraro, Pacini, Marini, and then Ica, your coacher. 
Just ahead of Corsi and Locatelli. Romano Fanati down in 18th in the end. Over 10 seconds behind his teammate. And he's faster over the two-minute barrier. So he's got lots of work to do against Mario. He wants to be playing with him all season long. And actually see him in races. Has Riders Championship as you would expect. But if you've forgotten how the points go. 25 for the win. 20 for second. 16 for third. It's 13 and 11. And it's down in point increments from 5th downwards to 15th. As you can see, Samari gets 10 points. And Ika gets 1. And looking at a career reward. So he's not quite there on first rider level. but And he didn't quite key achieve the qualifying jet. But he definitely did achieve the race trajectory. Break it down. Some good development points for the team. And some good reputation earned. And in MotoGP, Mark Marquez, one head of Dovi and Vinales, another Marquez double by Moto3. They lost count of how many overtakes took place as Jorge Martin, one head of Bezeki and Bastianini. So before we head to the second round of season in Argentina, let's look at bike development. As I said, it's a spec engine in Moto2, so we won't be developing that. It's all about the brake, suspension, frame and aerodynamics. So heading to Argentina, we could improve the brakes. Again, we've got the same options. Same with the suspension as well. With the frame. And then with the aerodynamics. But we've got a bit more penetration we can develop. As it also costs a bit more to develop the components. As you can see, almost 8,000 for the first components now. So there's nothing we can actually develop. But we've definitely been looking, I think, for the brakes. we the first development and may have been looking to build on that sip place grabbing the top five maybe around the Tomas del Rio Hondo circuit next time has Serenia Moto3 champ had a very promising beginning but how will he do on his second race in Moto2 sound watching and find out next time <laughs>